below. Hey, go on! Below does hell. Oh, you've come for Mr. Ryder's things. Aye. I'll call him. Right all. Mr. Ryder? Mr. Ryder? Yes? The drainman's here for your things. Oh, yes. Get the things out of the shop first and be careful with that furniture. It's all handmade. It all goes to the new shop and the trunk goes to the station. Right oh, mister. What's he so excited about? He's getting married today. Oh, I got married once. Cost me seven and sixpence. Wish I'd bought a dog. <laughs> I bet your wife wishes the same thing. Man, just what I would cut myself today of all days. Hand me a piece of paper, will, if you please. Thank you. I... I can't use this. It's a new story you're writing. Use it. That's all it's good for. Ah, oh, there you go now. Let no man discouragement ride on your shoulders. You've got talent and imagination and heart. Why, man, the whole world is open for you to write about. How? Well, I'm sorry, but I've no patience with the man who has no faith in himself. Ah, it's easy for you to talk, Dermot. You want to be the finest cabinet maker in England. Well, you work in wood, you can see what you're accomplishing. And you get paid for what you do. I want to be a writer, but nobody will pay me to write. I have to take any old job I can get that gives me a bare living and a chance to write on the side. A spider spins its web out of its own inside. And you've got to dig down and pull it out of your heart and your body. The things you know, and you will. I'm as sure of your success as I am of my own. Holy heaven, hark to the time it is. A fine looking bridegroom I am. Well, I've got you all packed and ready to go. All packed? A fine packer you are, leaving Brian Baru himself hanging on the wall. The greatest of all the Irish kings. It's humiliated enough I am that you've had to repose in this Milby Borden house. <laughs> you and your Irish patriotism. Now don't start on that or you will late for your own wedding. Pay no attention to the Sassanite Brian Baru. You can't expect any Englishman to understand an Irishman's love for Ireland. Well, not an Irishman who left there at the ripe old age of five. And what if I did? I can still see the green hills and the blue lakes. And remember the joyful kind of sadness that hangs over the land. It's all here in my heart. If I ever have a son, I'll give him back to Ireland to live the life I missed. If I ever have a son, I'll get him out of a slum like this. Out of a life like this. It's not my son's body I'm thinking of, but his spirit. What chance has anyone's spirit in a stinking, starving slum? My son will have something worth living for. My son will have something worth dying for. Oh, oh, that's a oh, bad oh, thing. <laughs> Getting in a rage about the future of our unborn sons. Yes, <laughs> no. <laughs> and spitting at each other like a pair of killed kitty cats. <laughs> I've loaded the stuff from your shawl. Oh, well, thanks already. As soon as I bring Sheila back from Liverpool, I'll be seeing you. Of course. Well, good luck, David. Yeah, you forgot your bag. Oh, I'll be forgetting my head if it wasn't nailed in my shoulders. <laughs> now, mind you, find a good place for yourself to live. I'll have to be a cheap one till I get a job, but, uh, but I'll be all right. Sure, you'll be all right. We'll both be all right. Remember the lad with the banner, Excelsior. Onward and upward. Me with me hand, you with your head. Goodbye, Will. Goodbye, Dermot. <laughs> if you haven't got a job, you can't have the room. I want nothing to do with vagabonds. Oh, oh, thank you. Good night. cheaper, mister. Not round these parts. Number 28 Shelley Street. What about it? Used to know a family who lived here. Name of Essex. Never heard of them. My mother moved to this house the day she was married. She bore nine children in it. She buried five from it. She died in it herself. And you never heard of her. Hey, you're off your chump. I'll call me husband if you don't move on. <laughs> move on. <laughs> That's it. Onward and upward. I'm telling you, they shouldn't chase me, but don't blame them. You're blessed if they had a short weight anyway, and you know it, you old cheat. You and your soft singing daughter ought to be ashamed of yourself trying to put the blame on me. And what if I am short in my collections? How much do you pay me anyway for delivering your blasted bread? Oh. 
dainty, ain't you? Dainty and religious. And you don't like me language, do you? Well, I don't like your job, and what's more, I'm chucking it this blooming minute. Agent, what used to live on Shelley Street? Huh? I'm Joe Baxter. Joe Baxter? I remember me. Yes. Yes. I remember you. I remember your yelling after me in the streets. Does your mother take in washing? I remember the times you dumped that washing in the mud. I remember your stealing the pennies that my mother slaved to earn. And I remember the beatings that I got for losing them. Well, here's payment for all those memories. <laughs> My father wants to speak to you. Please. Well, thank you, young man. Thank you very much. <laughs> you, you must excuse me. This asthma catches me by the throat. Oh, that's all right. Dad, I happen to come along. No, no. No, I want to ask another favor. That cart outside. No one to deliver the bread. Well, uh, Father means to pay you for it. It'll be worth three shillings if you'll oblige us. Please. Oh, all right. Here's the list. All the addresses are written out and what you collect. The cart's already loaded. <laughs> I'll be waiting up for you to pay you when you come back. Right on. It's a bad thing, a girl like you alone in the shop and, and me. <laughs> me so helpless. We ought to get a good, respectable man to deliver the bread and live in. Protection for both of us. Perhaps that young man. Huh? <laughs> I wonder if he would. Essex? Yes, Nellie? It's chapel night and father's bad again. I was wondering, when you get back from making the deliveries, could you take me? Your chapel means a great deal to you, doesn't it, Nellie? As much as writing this book means to me, I suppose. Oh, well, much more. That's just your work. Why, Nellie, haven't you heard that work is worship and labor only? I'm sure that isn't in the Bible. Never mind, Nellie. Yes, I'll take you to chapel. Who knows, you might convert a heathen. I... I'd like to. Thank you, Mr. Essex. Oh, hello, Money Spider. Now, if you run down the page, this book will be a success. Come on, now. Come on, come on. Oh, curse you. Well, it will be a success in spite of you. Do you hear that? In spite of you. What is it, Nelly? What's the matter? It's funny. Good morning. 
parcel for your husband. It's a fine morning. Will come for you. All right, I'll be down in a jiffy. You know, Nellie, I really look forward to Henry's day off. There's something fascinating about baking. You put in a soggy lump of dough and you take out a beautiful lump. My book! My book! Oh, why didn't you tell me? I didn't know. Oh, quick, quick, hand me a knife. Oh. Oh, Nelly, pinch me. Pinch you? It isn't real. I, I don't believe it. I, I'm dreaming. I shall wake up in a minute and find it isn't true. A Lancashire Lad by William Essex. Look at it, Nelly. Look at it. Feel it. Oh. Smell it. Smell, smell. Printer's ink. The perfume of the gods. William, don't make fun of the scriptures. You know I don't like it. Oh, listen. Listen to what they say about it. Here is a first novel by a new author who writes a powerful story of Manchester slums and factories. Told in direct and forceful prose, <laughs> this absorbing story gives promise of greater work to come. <laughs> oh, wait till old Dermot hears about that. <laughs> oh, couldn't, couldn't we go over there tonight and celebrate? Not tonight. Why not? Chapel. Oh, Nellie, couldn't you miss it tonight, just for once? Miss Chapel? I haven't missed Chapel since I was 14. Oh. All right, Nellie. Never mind. I'll go alone. Jip, jip, my little horse, jip, jip again, so how many maps it up and down? Three scores and ten, so. Dee, day, dee, 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 if the baby's born tonight, he's his cradle all ready and waiting for him. With a harp of Erin at his head and shamrocks all around to guard him from harm. Oh, I wouldn't have come over if I'd known it was going to be tonight. It wasn't supposed to be, but the baby had his own ideas about that. <laughs> and it's, it's glad of your company I am. I wonder how she was getting on up there. Miss Mulvaney! They put me out, the both of them. What have you got to be yelling about? Well, I, uh, I was just wondering, uh, if there's anything I can do. Oh, you've done enough. What if that woman makes me feel like a leper? Oh, come on, sit down here and smoke a pipe with me. It's a Becky. Huh? Thanks, yes. What's that? Oh, oh, it's... Just my book. Just your book. Hmm. Give it to me. Hmm. Just your book. Isn't that just like the men? You've been there for half an hour and never spoke a word about it. Well, it didn't seem important when I got here, compared to what's going on upstairs. That's just like you, Will. Always thinking of yourself last. It's a nice dignified job of bookbinding. Nice fine print. But... Why, man? Why, Will? The dedication. Read it. Read it. To my friend, Dermot O'Riordan, without whose good advice and bad language, <laughs> this book would never have been started. <laughs> well, I, I don't know what to say. I, I'm like the parrot that bit into the hot potato. Uh, I know what to say. Excelsior. Onward and upward to both of us. What did I tell you? I'm sending a load of furniture off to London next week to the exhibit. Ah. Yeah. Sure, we'll be moving there one of these days. I'm going to be the finest cabinet maker in England, or my name's not Dermot Seamus Patrick, Patrick Timothy O'Rourke O'Riordan. Oh, Mr. O'Riordan, it is my pleasure to inform you that you've got a son. Congratulations, Dermot. And though it's really the boy I should be congratulating for picking himself such a fine father. God make me worthy of you. Uh, you're always one ahead of me, Dermot. I've got a book, but you've got a son. <laughs> oh, 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 it was wonderful, I tell you. The old woman flinging open the window upstairs and calling down, "'Tis me pleasure to inform ye you've got a son." <laughs> I didn't mean to tell you so soon, but you needn't envy Dermot. Not for long. 
Do you mean it? Are, are, are we really going to have a child? I prayed for one. Oh, Nelly, Nelly, how wonderful. Oh, let's not have him born here. Let's move. Let's get away. Get away? Yes. But I've lived here all my life. My father had the bakery here before I was born. Oh, sell the bakery. I'll make money out of my books. Sell the bakery. Oh, oh, I, I, I don't want him to be born here. I want to get him out of a slum like this, out of a life like this. It's an honest, decent life. Oh, yes, 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 but, but that's not enough. It's enough for me. It should be enough for my child. I want my child to have everything that I missed. Good food for his body, good food for his mind. And his soul. What about his soul? Well, you know, Nellie, they say, be good and you'll be happy, but <laughs> I think be happy and you'll be good. And he shall be happy. William, you're not going to smoke in our bedroom. Hmm? Well, I think a man might do anything the night he learns he's going to have a son. It might not be a son. Oh, it must be a son. It must. There we are. Now keep his bottle warm. Uh, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. There we are. That's right. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, what's that? He might need a fresh one. My son's not going around changing his trousers in public. You can do it at Dermot's. And don't you two get to talking the way you do and forget to come home. No, ma'am. You're obedient, servant, ma'am. On the loose. What are you bound for? I was just bringing Rory over to see you. Well, I was just bringing Oliver to see you. <laughs> <laughs> Lift up your lads so they can say how do you do to each other. Uh, uh, look at the eyes on him. As big as daisies in a cow's mouth. <laughs> Gonna shake hands, shake hands, shake hands. Look at them, look at them shaking hands. <laughs> if these two don't make good friends, no one ever will. Well, let's sit down and have a pipe together. Right. I've got something I want to talk to you about. What is it, Will? Well, I've been thinking very much, dear. You know, it won't be long before these boys will want a place where they can swim and fish and sail their boats during the summer holidays. <sighs> now, there's a nice bargain. Nice little cove for safety. Sea beyond, down on the south coast. I was wondering, would you care to go in on a place like that with me? Uh, how soon are you thinking of doing this? Well, another five or six years. Man alive, I should be racking my brains for a plan that far ahead. But you have to plan far ahead. You have to know where you're going. Uh, listen to him. You found yourself, haven't you, Will? You flowered into a man. <laughs> I flowered into a father. <laughs> you know, Dermot, they talk about the miracle of motherhood, but nobody ever writes poems and songs about the miracle of fatherhood. A man sees a bit of knitting about the house, socks and things that look as if they might fit a canary, and, and one day he's kicked out like a homeless cat, and after a century or two, Somebody shows him a bundle which might be Mrs. Flanagan's wash. He takes it fearfully and gingerly, and something happens to him at the first touch. His heart melts and his bones turn to water, <laughs> and he's a slave to it for the rest of his life. Look, Dermot, the wonder of it. This little hand, into which I shall pour the world. I'll work my fingers to the bone to give him everything he asks for. I'll write book after book after book, and they shall be rungs of a ladder that he'll climb. He shall have everything. Everything. Faith will. You better be minding you don't spoil him. prize honestly. How could you stand there and take it, knowing all the time that you hadn't won it fairly? That you cheated? This isn't a freehand drawing. You traced it, didn't you, Oliver? No. I know that you did. You can't prove it. Besides, it makes Father happy when I get good marks in school.
I said, turn back, Oliver! Turn back! He's swimming out too far. No, Sheila, he'll turn back. But not until he's given his father a good fright. yourself first. Why, any actress worth her salt could go right on in a play, with her heart breaking and the tears wet on her face. I could do that. You? Oh, no, no, no. I don't think you could. Just what? Pick up your shield, Fergus McRoy, and stand on my left. And Sean O'Shaughnessy, stand on my right. Before you start out on your valiant mission, take with you the knowledge that to the victorious one I shall give the torque of gold which encircles my white neck. What's a torque? For the love of heaven, what should a torque be? By the very sense of the words I'm speaking, but it's going to go around the neck. If you don't understand it, shut up. The thing is to feel it, feel it, as I do. Oh, you and your play acting. Come on, Rory. I'll race you to the big tree. Not everyone can feel as intensely as you do, Mava. It's a gift. And a penalty. Erin Gabral! Why, damn it! Get the rich woman to wash the dust of London out of Rory, Mava, it's father! Oh, my darling. Oh, 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 hello there. Hello, Rory, my lad. Well, my darling. <laughs> London. Sugar and spice and everything nice. Hello, Hello, Will. Hello, Will. Now, children, run upstairs and get dressed. Uh, did you go to the zoo, Uncle Dermot? I did that. <laughs> Oliver is sixteen to town, riding on a pony. Stuck a feather in his hat and said, My aunt, I told me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we'll have grand times together when we move to London. We'll spend days. May I come in, Will? Come in, Dermot. Where's my book of the Irish Kings? I want my Irish king. You want a smack in the bottom. Is that any way to burst into a gentleman's room, hear them that you are? Oliver has my Irish king. Oh, Rory, you're always losing things. You know I haven't got your book. We had it in here and I left it. And I won't go to bed without it. <laughs> but you took it back with you. I saw it under your arm. Don't you remember? No, I don't. Well, well, we better have a look around. I wouldn't be troubling you, Will. But if he doesn't find his book, he'll be going to bed with a face as long as a wet Sunday. Oh, is that the Irish Kings, 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 the That's something, you. Where did you get that? Oh, that looks good, we must have... We must read it together. Are you sure you didn't lose the book, Rory? past your bedtime, Oliver. I'm sorry, Nellie. It's all my fault. But this young scalawag thought that Oliver had his book. You'd better apologize to Oliver for your rudeness. Oh, I don't mind, Uncle Dermot. Really, I don't. All right, Nellie. Come along now. Off to bed with you. Good night, Nellie. Good, Good night. night. Good night. I'm to trouble you. Just a minute, Dermot. Yes, please. Um, last chance. 
Ah, here it is. I knew it was here. <laughs> there, now, you found your book and you turned the house upside down. Newton. And I go on off to bed with you. Good night, Oz. Good night. Good night. Oliver, why did you steal Rory's book? Steal it? But I didn't steal it. It was on the bookshelf. You must have put it there. Yes. I put it there. And you covered it with paper and wrote adventures on it, so that Rory wouldn't know that it was his book. Yes. I did. And you said that Rory had taken it away with him, although you knew that he hadn't. Wasn't that a lie? Yes, it was a lie, and I know I shouldn't have told it. But I didn't steal the book. Well, if that isn't stealing, what do you call it? Don't you see? I took it because it was Rory's. I don't understand. I love Rory, and I wanted to have something belonging to him. Something that he loved. Well, then, why didn't you ask Rory to give you the book? Oh, I knew he wouldn't give it to me. So, you see, I had to take it. I didn't mean to do wrong. You do believe me, don't you, Father? Yes. Yes, I believe you, Oliver. Oh, I'm so glad. I, I'd have cried myself to sleep if you hadn't. Go into the bathroom and wash your hands and face. Yes, Mother. And brush your teeth. What are you going to do about this? Hmm? Well, nothing to do. It's all settled. Whether I'm anything to you or not, I'm the child's mother. Do you think it doesn't matter to me that he's growing up a cheat and a liar? Oh, it's not that bad. Oliver got his sense of right and wrong a bit muddled, that's all. Natural as a child. These things are easily straightened out with understanding and love. I'm not blinded by what you call love. Bringing up a child to think he can do what he likes. Giving him everything. Presents, games, expensive schools. Everything he fancies or dreams of. Give it to him. Give it to him. That's your idea of love. Well, it isn't mine. Whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth. Oliver's my child as well as yours. I have a right to have some say about him. Very well. What do you think should be done? I think he should be thrashed. Well, I don't. You haven't the strength to do your duty. What is that way, Philip? No other suggestion? I may as well leave. I'm sorry for what's happened. But I had to do and say what I believe to be right. I know. I know. Best thing for all of us is to try and forget it. No. We've got to have an understanding about Oliver. You've always made his upbringing your business. It's always been your son. Your son. I know it's hard for you to understand, Nellie, but Oliver is more than my son. He's a... he's a symbol of all I wanted and had to go without. 
He must be better than I am. He must be me going on from the point where I left off. But he isn't only you, he's me as well. And I mean to have my say about him from now on. Nelly, why did you ever marry me? Oh, I, I know you were lonely when your father died and I was around. There must have been something else. I thought you must be a good man and we'd be happy together. But you fought me every inch of the way. You fought me against moving to the beaches, and yet you grew to love it. You fought against my buying this place, and now you look forward to the summers here. And you're going to fight me against moving to London. And why? You knew when you married me that I was a writer. You knew I'd never be contented standing behind a counter selling buns. I, I don't mind for myself, but I mind for Oliver. Ah, oh, Oliver. That's the root of it. Everything for Oliver. Everything. Why not? What else has our marriage brought me? Five pounds to see you, Parkson. Will this cover it? Oh, not your watch. Oh, stop being a nursemaid, Rory. Oliver knows what he's doing. Three aces. Three queens. Your father gave you that watch. Don't give me another. Don't look so solemn, Rory. My father gave me a watch with my initial set in rubies. Well, so would Oliver's father have done if he made his money sweating men in coal mines. Oh, Rory, don't get your Irish up. It's none of your business how old Parkson makes his money. William Essex, I say, is he your father? Well, so I've been told. Oliver. Of course he is. Remember his last book? Where the hero was the dockyard laborer? I'm sorry, I don't read him myself. You don't know what you're missing. He's one of my favorites. I say, you're as bad as the old girls who come tootling up to me in burble. Don't tell me your father is the famous novelist. How too, too delightful. I take him to bed with me every night. I simply couldn't go to sleep without my dear, dear William Essex. <laughs> <laughs> Oliver, you are a card. Tell them about old Mortimer and your English papers. Uh, go on, let's on. hear about it. You know, after perusing, um, uh, after perusing the... After perusing fruitlessly, your extraordinary hieroglyphics and pondering your mixed metaphors, I ask myself, can this exhibition of illiteracy possibly come from the son of a famous novelist? I must confess, my belief in the hereditary theory of Darwin has received a crushing, in fact, an irreparable blow. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I'd heard it. <laughs> now, you're not likely to. They don't worry about your English marks. Your father owns a coal mine. I wish mine did. It's a jolly sight easier to live up to coal than culture. <laughs> your deal. I'm sure Mr. Parkson will be very pleased with that one, Miss Vennell. Clever idea of his showing the romance of coal mining. But what I mean to say is most people think of coal mines as such depressing places. Mr. Parkson getting out this album with your very fine drawings, if I may say so, Miss Vennell. You may say so. He's paying enough for them. I'd like to do a drawing of one of the men before I go. One of the miners? Mm -hmm. A character sketch. Oh, I see, to be sure. Uh, may I suggest that you select one who looks well-fed? Uh, my man! Me, miss? No, 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 the tall one. Come back here. Didn't you hear young lady speak to you? I, uh... I'm in a hurry. And keep a civil tongue in your head and call me sir. I can manage it, thank you, Mr. Smith. Oh, very well. Do you want to earn a shilling? Uh, Bob? Mm -hmm. Well, I might. What do I have to do for it? Well, you'll have to stand over there and let me make a sketch of you. And all of me? Oh, you mean a full length, yes. Ah. That would be worth two, Bob. <laughs> well, you certainly drive a hard bargain. I, when I've got so much to sell. Very well, then, two bob. Stand over there, will you? Uh, 
there naturally. That's better. Turn in, will you? What do you do in the mine? Dig. Oh. You enjoy your work? You mean to keep on asking questions? It'll cost you another bob if you do. I'm not that interested. Profile, please. Hmm? Side view. Don't keep on looking at me. Look at that sign. Do you do this for a living or just to amuse yourself? If I answer you, it'll cost you a bob. <laughs> Even up. <laughs> You've got me that time, miss. I do this for a living. There. That's it. Do you like to see it? I don't mind if I do. Eee, that's a champion bit of drawing, is that? Well, uh, here's your money. I only took brass from a woman once in my life. You'd never guess what I did for it. I delivered a van load of bread. <laughs> Sounds innocent enough, doesn't it? A load of bread, warm from Dublin. But it changed my whole life. Well, you're safe in taking this. I've hired you and I'm paying you. Not honestly. I thought I was catching a miner. Well, you were. You needn't lie. No, there are different kinds of mines. Now, the one I own Oh, is... so now you own a mine. It was part of my inheritance. You'll be surprised at the things I get out of it. Hmm. Diamonds, I suppose. And sometimes. Occasional gem that sparkles. Little gold and silver. <laughs> Good deal of lead and sometimes just muck. Oh, the muck gives me a clue. You must be a writer. Your servant, madam. I am one of those humblest of creatures. A man who digs in the mine of his intellect and brings... Very forth... interesting, I'm sure, but I'm afraid I haven't the time to stop and listen to you because I have a train to catch. Oh, uh, carry a bag for a bomb, miss. <laughs> You're the most mercenary man I ever met in my whole life. Don't you ever do anything unless you get a shilling for it? Well, sometimes I get two bomb, miss. <laughs> Idiot. <laughs> I know, it's the same with my work. If I can capture the body of the little workman at his job, the way he walks, the way he swings his pick, when I come to paint or draw, I find I've got it in my fingers. That's what makes work so exciting. I never knew that talking to a woman could be like this. What do you mean? Well, I... I never knew a woman who did anything, who, who had a, a career, as you call it. I thought they were all... Well, blue stockings. <laughs> I didn't know that a woman could be beautiful, young and intelligent. All at the same time. I'm glad you put beautiful first. Are you vain? A little. I'm glad. Why? Because I wouldn't have you too perfect. I must catch that train. Are you finished with all your research down here? Uh, no, no, I'll be here for another week. Down in a coal mine every day. <laughs> By the time I get through, I'll have coal dust in my eyes, and my ears and my lungs. And if God is good to me, in my book. You say that as if it were a prayer. It is. Work is worship, labor holy. <laughs> what is it? I said that once. I say it often. It's true, you know. 
I never knew a woman who thought so. You don't know very much about women, do you? Well, I, I managed to write about them. What do you writers know about women? What effort do you make to understand them? You call a creature Gertie, stick a pink hat on her head, a bit of sewing in her hand, say she likes marmalade, and, and there's your heroine. <laughs> I was reading a book coming up in the train. Um, Every Street. Oh, by uh, Willie Messick. Yes, you know his book? Yes. They're rather fine. He has a great power and perception, sort of Manchester Dickens. Oh. <laughs> well, I, uh... I wouldn't say he was as good as all that. Uh, Professional jealousy? No, no, not exactly. Oh, but I do think he's had luck catching on as he has. <laughs> but I'll grant you one thing. His women aren't Gertie's in pink hats. Oh, they're not women at all. What's that? Well, that's a man's one glaring weakness. Oh, I, I thought he did them rather well. Uh, have you ever met a woman like one of his heroines? Oh, well, have I? I don't meet many women. No, but you write about them. That proves my point about William Essex. But the, the critics like his love scenes. The critics are men. Now, you're, you're not going to stand there and tell me that you'd make love like William Essex. I might have. Once. I wouldn't know. Not after tonight. the right to do that. I'm, I'm not a free man, but I shall love you forever and ever. I knew it the first moment I saw you. I knew it too. I... No, don't speak. Don't tell me anything about yourself. I, I don't want to know your name or who you are or where you live. It, it's not safe for me to know. I, I must never see you again. Oh, no, please. No tears. I, I don't think I can bear that. Would it make it easier for you to know that I shall be in tears when I'm alone? Go quickly. Here. Get your train. Go out of my life while I can send you. Well, you must find him and tell him to return to Manchester at once. There's been a very serious accident. And please, please break it to him very gently. Yes, it's, it's his wife. She's been... Oh, I'll tell him. Poor chap. Thomas, whatever is it? My Ayrton Cockless. I have to find Mr. Essex. Bad news for him, Thomas. Why, his wife, run down by motor car. Killed. I'm on the way back from chapel. Why, it seems only yesterday that I started down this path, pushing Oliver in his pram. Yeah. Oh, well, London may be too late for me, but it'll be just in time for Oliver. Ah, oh, there you are. I can't finish the trunks well until I know what clothes you're wearing to London. What I have on? You better hurry, Sheila. The trunks and the books are all they're waiting for. Well, maybe it's doing the book. Oh, well, I'd better give her a hand then. It's getting late. Oh, that's one I forgot. Let me your pocket knife, Darrett. For what? This morning band. I ripped them off all his other coats. Well, do you think you ought? He's worn them close to a year. Even then, they couldn't ask for more than that. I'm not going to have the man carry the trappings of bereavement to London with him. It's a new life he's going to. A new chance of happiness. Oh! Oh, and did I hit you in the eye? Why didn't you tell me you'd dramatized your book? It's wonderful. They'll go mad about it in London. Oh, you think so, do you? Oh, is it a black eye you're going to have? Put some beefsteak on it or a cold towel. Oh, it's all right. I'm so sorry, darling, but it your own fault sneaking up on me. Me lost to the world in this beautiful play. It'll make me famous. You? You? Well, who else? <laughs> Who'd you write it for if it wasn't for me? A, a part that fits like a glove. <laughs> I'll be the success of the season, the toast of the town. Do you think you've had enough experience? Experience? Ex oh, listen to the man. Is it an old hag you want to be playing your heroine, or a, a beautiful young creature like myself? Ooh. Besides, didn't I play all through the provinces last season and, and got nothing but praise from the critics? 
Didn't I play Rosalind at the festival and, and Ophelia? And Juliet? What's here? A cup closed in my true love's hand? Oh, poison, I see, hath been his timeless end. Oh, Cheryl, drunk all and left no friendly drop to help me after. I will kiss thy lips. Haply, Haply some, some poison, poison yet, yet doth hang, hang on them. To make me, me die with a restorative. <laughs> Ah, thy lips are warm. Thy lips are warm. Oh, happy dagger. Oh, happy dagger. <laughs> this is thy sheath. There rest and let me die. <laughs> hey, whoa, whoa, whoa. That's going too far. <laughs> As a matter of fact, Wertheim's going to produce the play. And you're reading the part for him on Monday. Oh, oh you darling. <laughs> you darling. Mm. Oh, you darling. <laughs> Mother. to tell you. Parks and Carmen is the opening, so I'm taking you a girl. A girl? Well, I suppose it is about time you were beginning to think about girls. Uh, anyone I know? I don't think so. I met her at Parkson's. What's her name? Livia. Livia Vanel. Livia. Ah, short for Olivia, I suppose. Oliver, Olivia. Quite harmonious. <laughs> What's she like? I'll wait till you see her. Pretty hard hit, huh? Rather. Are you bring her back to the party here tonight? Well, I thought I would, but maybe I shouldn't. Why not? Pretty stiff competition. Competition? Look in the mirror. Hmm? Would you introduce your best girl to a distinguished-looking bloke like that? Oh, oh, nonsense. Oh, you're a very handsome fella. Up at Oxford, everyone thought you were much too young to be my father. Oh, they did. Eh? They said, you can't fool us. That's not your father, that's your brother. Oh. <laughs> Don't we look like brothers? Uh, except, of course, you're much better looking. Oliver. What is all this flattery laid on with the delicacy of a shovel leading to? I beg your pardon, sir? Well, in other words, how much is it going to cost me? So you, you don't think I'd stoop to compliments for any ulterior motive, do you? Think you would. <laughs> My boy, I know you would. <laughs> Come on, now. What have you been up to? How much is it this time? <laughs> the card debt. I was a bit too optimistic about filling straights and flushes. A little matter of a hundred pounds. Hundred pounds. It was a year's wages when I was your age. Ah, oh, but you see, I'm having a good time for both of us. That's why it costs you double. Remember? You always said Oliver must have all the things I missed. Well, I've taken on the job, and I'm not doing it by halves. <laughs> when I'm offered a drink, I say one for me and one for the governor. Gets to be a bit of a strain at times, but I'm bearing up nobly. <laughs> <laughs> Scoundrel. Hurling back my innocent words in my teeth. I'm afraid I've spoiled you. But you enjoyed it. Oh, well. I'll write your check in the morning. Oh, but you must settle down one of these days, old chap. Oh, yes, one of these days. shouldn't have done that. You're not sorry. No, but it seemed a nice thing to say. You're an impudent young scamp. Still, what's the good of being young and handsome if you can't be impudent? Then you're not angry with me. I don't get angry at unimportant things. Well, so I'm not important to you, huh? Not important enough. Look, Oliver, you're very charming and very attractive, but you're just a boy. I'll grow older. Besides, I'm a lot more experienced than you are if it comes to that. Oh, don't be a goose. Besides, I've told you over and over again, there's someone else that... Oh, I know. The man you met in the moonlight. The man whose name you don't even know. I could make you forget him. I wish you could. But I know that if I heard his voice, 
If I saw his face, if he came into this room, I'd go to him. You'd come toddling back to me. <laughs> hmm? Oh, for the confidence of 20. We must hurry or we'll be late for the theater. Look here, my boy. Are you making a habit of this? <laughs> Why not? It's very pleasant. <laughs> oh, you're hopeless. <laughs> Wonderful. I don't know when I've been so moved in this year. Jolly good. Didn't think the old boy could do it. I can hardly believe it's me, all little Mabel. Isn't she wonderful, Dermot? She's a real all right, all right, all right. Aren't you glad you married me? I am. <laughs> Who else would it be? Ladies and gentlemen, I can't pretend that I'm not proud and thrilled that you liked my play, Every Street, which has been so beautifully performed by this company of players. It was, as you know, one of my novels, but the fact that it was dramatized is due to the insistence of a charming young lady who cut her first teeth on my watch chain. <laughs> I saw her grow up loving the theater, and then... One day, in a moment of weakness, I promised to write her a play. I, uh, I'm ashamed to confess that it was to bribe her out of a tantrum. <laughs> she still has them, you know. Only now, we call it temperament. <laughs> and so, ladies and gentlemen, if this play is a success, the major share of the credit must go to Miss Maver O'Riordan. Wonderful. Weren't you wonderful? Well, how could I help it with such words to say as you put in my mouth? Those love scenes, I didn't know you could write them. Well, I couldn't once, but I learned. For me. You learned to write them for me, didn't you? Yes, yes. For you, Mother. <laughs> I do love you so. Oh, I love you too, my dear. <laughs> Excuse me, Mr. Essex, but she'll be taking cold standing there without a coat. That's right, Annie. You take care of her. She's the finest young actress in London. She is that. Maybe, my darling. Hello. Hi, my darling. Hello. Congratulations, Mr. Essex. Thank you, Mr. Crawford. Very fine play. Very fine. Oh, thank you. I'm so glad you enjoyed it. Before you start out on your valiant mission, take with you the knowledge that to the victorious one, I shall give the talk of gold that encircles my white neck. What's a talk? <laughs> For the love of heaven, what should a talk be but something to circle your neck? <laughs> <laughs> a beautiful performance, Miss O'Reilly. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Oh, what a great one. Then I'm so happy I love the whole wide world. So long as I live, I'll never forget this night. The first time I ever put foot in a London theatre. And in the stalls, too, miss. Fancy that. Mr. Essex given his seats in the stalls. Aren't you feeling well, miss? Oh, yes, I am perfectly well. I, I suppose it's all the excitement, the play and everything. Do you remember when the arrow looked at her and said, I shall love you forever and ever? Oh, if any man ever said that to me, I'd never forget it. You'll never forget it. What's your name? Bessie. Am I beautiful tonight, Bessie? Oh, you fair make a picture, miss. Thank you. Uh, 
Well, man, we've done it. We've done it, the Phillips. Yes, we've come a long way from that slum in Manchester. And the plans we made for ourselves and our son. Ah, oh, you and your sons. I'd like to hear a few fine things about the daughter of the house. We're going to read plenty of those in the papers tomorrow. A poor play saved by the magnificent acting of the one and only Neva O'Reilly. Am I the one and only? You're one and only? I've been your willing slave ever since you bit me on the nose at the age of two. That's another thing I owe to our friendship, Gilbert. Sharing this child with you. Yeah, well, I wish you shared the other one with me. His mother's a bit worried about mixing me like a crowd of young Irish hotheads. Now, who can she be? Did you see the look in his face? Yes, I saw it. It isn't true. Oh, it isn't true. There, there can't be this much happiness in one night for any man. If I don't reach out and, and hold you fast, you'll vanish from my sight. What brought you here? No, no, don't tell me. Let me think it was a miracle. Sent to me from heaven. Oh, oh my dear. You didn't forget. Forget? Oh, does the sun forget to rise? Do the stars forget to shine? Do the, the flowers forget to bloom? <laughs> oh, if you only knew all the things I've done. I've risked a hundred arrests for pursuing helpless females down dark streets, peering under umbrellas and saying, Oh, pardon me, madam, I thought you were... And, and then I couldn't even say who I thought you were. You see, I don't even know your name. Do you realize that for all these months, nearly a year, I've only been able to think of you as... My sweet, my, my love, my, my darling. I tried to find a name for you, but there isn't one good enough. <laughs> what is your name? Livia. Livia. Well, there you are, darling. Fox has just telephoned. He wants us to join him for supper. I didn't know you were here. You don't mind if we run away a little early, do you? Hmm. Really, Oliver, aren't you asking me to be rather rude? I... I mean, willingly to lose so charming a guest. <laughs> Livia, you've made quite a hit. Isn't she marvellous? I'm glad you approve, sir. And if I hadn't? Well, I'm afraid I couldn't picture my world without Livia. Could I, darling? Oliver. That's all right. Father hasn't forgotten what it's like to be in love. <laughs> oh, I have you. William Essex. A fine host you are, hiding yourself away from the company. Excuse me. Come on, then. Leave your health to drink. Livia, have you ever met my father before? Yes. Is he by any chance the man you couldn't forget? Yes. Curtain rises on another Essex drama. Champagne, sir. To drink your father's health. Hmm? Oh, yes, of course. Ladies and gentlemen, this is possibly the first time in history that an Irishman has had a chance to make a speech and didn't take it. <laughs> <laughs> but I know that nothing I could say could add to the joy of the occasion for this very dear friend of mine who's already trembling like a leaf because he knows that I'm easy to start and hard to stop. <laughs> <laughs> and so I will say only this. A toast, ladies and gentlemen. A toast to William Essex, the happiest man in London. William <laughs> Essex. brought you some hot coffee, sir. Sure you won't have a bite to eat with it? Uh, no, no. Nothing, thanks. Very good, sir. You shouldn't have come. I had to. Why? The 
because I know what you're thinking about Oliver and me. And you're so wrong. Oliver has absolutely no claim on me. After all, every woman has men who are attracted to her, who call her darling. But Oliver's my son. Oh, don't dramatize that. True, he liked to take me out, say pretty things to me, flirt with me a little. That's all part of growing up. But I never encouraged him. Never led him to think I was anything more than amused. I even told him about you. That I'd met a man I'd never forget. And later I told him you were that man. It's getting cold. The fire's going out. I'm very sorry. Thank you. Well? Olivia, why don't you go? Why can't you leave me in peace? Would you be at peace if I left you? No. My poor darling. No, don't. After all, what do you expect me to do? Compete with my own son? I told you, Oliver means nothing to me. But you mean something to Oliver. No, I, I'm not going to take you away. Take me away? But, but what am I? A, a desk, a chair, a table? Take it, my dear Oliver. I give it to you. It's yours. You probably spent your whole life giving things to Oliver. He's my son. You can't give him everything. Life has something to say about that. And you can't give me to Oliver because I won't be given. Go to him. Tell him that we love each other. He's only a boy. He'll forget me. And if he doesn't? That's Oliver's business. You can't live his life for him. Oh, don't you see? He's bound to meet some woman sometime who doesn't want him. It happens to be me. It's nothing to do with it. He'll be attracted to hundreds of girls before he finds out what love really is. Oh, I wish I could believe that. You must believe it. You can't say anything to me that I haven't said to myself. But it, it's no use. You sent me away once before. Are you going to send me away again? I'll go away. I'll go out of your life and never come back again. If you'll do just one thing, look in my eyes and say, Livia Vano, I don't love you. Just say that once and I'll go. And I shall love you forever, and ever, and ever. Don't think I misunderstand the feelings of a young man, Oliver. I, I know how sincere and real they can be, and, and I know what pain they can give. But they pass. They change. I'm sure of this. Otherwise, I couldn't tell you what I'm going to tell you now. Olivia and I are going to be married soon. Talman qui marint ferat. Hmm? Oh, I forgot, you don't know Latin, do you? Let him who has won it bear the palm of victory. Oh, it's hardly a case of victory. <laughs> that would imply a, a contest. After all, I met Livia a good while ago. Before you even knew her. Oh, yes, I've heard all about that romantic meeting. Might almost have happened in one of your own books, mightn't it? And now, having found you again, she prefers you. Naturally. You're being very decent about this, Oliver. Oh, not at all. All's fair in love and war. May the best man win. I say, I, I seem full of quotations, don't I? Well, now that I know how you feel about it, I don't mind telling you I've been through a pretty bad time. I, I was haunted by the thought that this might come between us. That it might upset all the plans I'd made for us, that I've looked forward to since you were a little boy. Or longer than that, really, since before you were born. <laughs> I even had visions of your packing up and leaving home. Leaving home? <laughs> Is that what fellows did when you were young? <laughs> well, it isn't what they do now. We learn to win, learn to lose. Public school spirit, sportsmanship, and all that sort of thing. If we can't get what we want, we make the best of what we can get. You really mean that, Oliver? No broken heart behind that gallant smile? Broken heart? Oh, I say, you write too many books. <laughs> well, no, I really can't echo Bill Mustoast. I am the happiest man in London. Thanks to you, my boy. 
Just paying my respects to my future stepmother. How nice of you, Oliver. I uh, hope these are suitable for a family call. I had some difficulty in selecting them. I, I didn't quite know what one brought to one's stepmama. I think you did very well. With my compliments, congratulations, and dutiful devotion. Thank you, Oliver. May I sit down? Of course. Thank you. Lovely weather we're having. Yes, and so much of it. London in June is really delightful. Delightful. Flowers in the parks, the birds in the trees, the bees and butterflies all scampering about. Oliver, how long are you going to keep this up? What? Well, this ridiculous attitude of uh, exaggerated respect. That's for you to say. Oliver, I know all this nonsense is just your way of, of trying to be nice and of showing me that you don't intend to complicate things for, well, for any of us. And I appreciate it, particularly because of your father. Your generosity has made him terribly happy. As a matter of fact, I'm very happy about it myself. Just think what a nice, cosy time we're going to have together. The three of us. Three? Papa, Mama, and little Oliver. You mean you... You intend to live with us? Of course. We'll be such a snug little family. Long winter evenings in town and long summer nights at Heron Water. When my father's busy with his books, you won't have to worry about being lonely. But I'll be there. And everyone will say, isn't it sweet, isn't it touching how devoted Oliver is to his beautiful young stepmama? So that's what's behind your pretended acceptance. That's what you're planning. I don't know what you mean. Oh, yes, you do, Oliver. You intend to live in your father's house and make love to your father's wife. Livia, how can you have such thoughts? Aren't you afraid of putting ideas into my head? I didn't know anyone could be so... so vile. You see, Mava, during that speech, you ought to have time to cross and be here. I don't know. I had in mind turning away then. I feel I wouldn't want even him to see my face when I was saying goodbye. Well, yeah, there's something in that. Yes, that's good. You know, you two ought to be very proud. You have a very clever child. We have that. I wish the same thing could be said for Rory, running around with that crowd of poets and patriots in Dublin, feeding the spirit and starving the stomach. Well, who sent him there? Ah, uh, no, 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 no. Let's not be starting that again. Well, who's going fishing with me? Oh, I can't. Not with Mabel driving back tonight. I, I want to get this act straightened out while she's here. Olivia! Livia, she'll go with me. Livia! Where's Livia? She's out on Beacon Head painting. You could ask Oliver. He likes fishing. <laughs> He's gone sailing. <laughs> Say, what am I, a leper? <laughs> <laughs> well, now, if no one else is available, I'll go with you. Now, woman, I'll not be having you do any favors. Unless you're coming for the sheer delight of me society, I... I've had 20 years of your society. <laughs> I'm more interested in catching fish. Uh, <laughs> Come on, you big bassoon. <laughs> you know, I used to wonder, watching your father and mother, if life had anything more important to offer one than that. And now you know the answer. <laughs> Have you set the date for your wedding yet? No, not yet. Make it soon. Hmm? I mean, happiness should be taken quickly. Besides, I like Livia. Yes. You know, it's splendid the way you've all made her feel that she really belongs here. Livia, darling. Ah, well, you're back early. Yes, I am a little. <laughs> nice to see you coming in with all your goods and chattels. Just as if you'd always lived here. Feels like it, doesn't it? Of course. <laughs> now, how about your work? Let's see what you've accomplished. No, please don't. I, I haven't done anything worthwhile looking at. Oh, that's not for you to say. You want to read my play and criticize it too. Now, fair's fair. Now, let's see what masterpiece is lurking here. 
I say, you didn't do much, did you? <laughs> and smeared besides. Now, which is the sky and which is the sea? I can't tell one blue from the other. <laughs> I gave up trying to decide. <laughs> you lazy girl. Oh, please don't scold. Olivia. My darling. Bless my heart, she's going to cry. Darling, I, I was only teasing. I had no idea you were so sensitive. I'm sorry. I... Mystery, mystery, thy name is woman. <laughs> hello, hello, hello. What's everyone up to? Ah, have a good sail. How'd the boat behave? Tip top. Found a nice breeze about a mile out. Hmm. Hello, Olivia. Been painting? Yes. What industry? Hmm. You and Father been playing games? Must be fun moving people about. You've got paint on your sleeve. Huh? Don't paint. Oh, my God. I was wondering, could I borrow some rouge? I'm so terribly pale Why? I could sit down here. You better let me do it. I'm an old hand at this makeup business. Oliver interrupted your painting, didn't he? Yes. I thought so. Oh, Mabel, I, I'm so frightened. You've no idea what this week has been. I know. I've seen it. If it keeps on like this, it'll simply mean that, that we can't get married. I'll call it off. I, I won't risk it. Don't ever say that. It would break his heart. You girls not dressed yet. There you are, nice and rosy. Just look at me nose. Sunburnt. The price of wifely devotion. <laughs> do hurry, Mava. We're ready now. Champagne for dinner. And I must confess, I do like a little drop of champagne. <laughs> <laughs> I say, I'd like to propose a toast. A toast to my beautiful and charming future stepmama. Ah, my darling. Thank you, Oliver. Yeah. That's the way I like to see you. A bit of colour in your cheeks. <laughs> you know, she came back from her painting this afternoon looking like a ghost. Did she know? And what was the trouble, Livia? Oh, uh... Oh, the frustration of a creative artist, my dear Dermot. Just because she had one of those blank days that happened to all of us, she packed up her kit, came home, and... and promptly burst into tears. Tears? <laughs> Why, Livia, you surprise me. Come now, Livia. You're in the bosom of your family. What was it that pierced that beautiful, shining armour you wear? Only one person shares my secrets. If I have any. <laughs> I seem to have reached bottom. How about some more champagne? Parker, is there another drop in the bucket? Yes, sir. Well, uh, what about this new play you're working on? Is it going to be better than every street? Oh, much better. And what kind of a part is my girl playing this time? Well, another one of father's noble women, dripping with sweetness and oozing with Victorian virtue. <laughs> Am I by any chance being told that I'm old-fashioned? Well, um, I don't mean to be rude, sir, but why don't you write a play about the people who really count? And who are they? The bad ones. Well, you know, it's not the good people who run things. They just get pushed aside. It's the bad ones who pull the strings. Don't they, Livia? Yes, they do. Hmm? You, you don't really believe that? I do. Oliver's right. Honest people have no chance against them, no defense. Because when they play the game, they break all the rules of fairness and, and sportsmanship and, and decency. That's a fine speech for the play. We could use it in the second act. But I, I... No, 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 I won't be argued with it. It'll work perfectly. I'll get you the play and show you just where I mean. Well, we're all finished, aren't we? Then we'll have coffee in the drawing room. <sighs> a wonderful idea you've given us. It's just the speech we've been needing. Oliver. Oh? I'd like to speak to you. Alone. Of course. Cigar? No, thanks. Well, uh, here's a comfortable chair. Remember, I used to sit on your lap in this one while you told me stories? Jolly good ones, too. No, I'd rather stand. What I have to say is not very pleasant. 
I say, you do look serious. What have I done now? I'd like you to explain your conduct at dinner this evening. I don't know what you mean, sir. Your manner to Livia. I can't put my finger on it, but under every word you spoke, there was something malicious, something almost sinister. Sinister? Oh, I say, aren't you going a bit too far? I hope I am. But why was Livia's behavior so strange during dinner? In fact, when she returned from painting this afternoon, she would... You weren't with her, were you, Oliver? Well, I was out sailing. Oh, yes, yes, so you were. You, uh, you didn't come ashore by any chance and join her? Of course not. Look here, Father. I don't want to be presumptuous and give you advice about women. But they do have moods, you know. Don't magnify them. I thought my manner towards her had been irreproachable. Yes, so it has been. Until tonight. Tonight? I was only having fun. I ragged you about your plays and I, I teased Livia. After all, I did have a little more champagne than I'm accustomed to. And generous as you were, my allowance didn't quite run to that. If I... If I went too far, I, I'm terribly sorry. But as far as anything malicious or sinister is concerned, I don't know what you're talking about. You do believe me, don't you, Father? Yes. Yes, Oliver, I, I believe you. I'm so glad. It's forgotten. Now, I think I'll take that cigarette, if you don't mind. Oh, no. oh, I had some. But... Yeah, what's that on your sleeve? Give me that. Paint. Blue paint. Oliver, you're a liar and a cheat. You were with Livia this afternoon. That's how her painting got smeared. That's why she came home unhappy and tormented. And that's what all your jibes meant at dinner. Well, what are you going to say? Nothing. Nothing? You hold all the aces. This isn't a poker game. No, the stakes are slightly higher. Liar and cheat. Why, your mother told me that, here in this very room, and I didn't believe her. How blind I've been and what a fool you must have thought me. Of course, if you're going to let a quarrel over a woman come between us... Libby is no longer the cause of this, Oliver. It goes much deeper than that. You've outraged and degraded what was the finest thing in my life. My love for my son. How right your mother was the first time I caught you in a liar should have thrashed you. Do you propose to do it now? Trust myself to touch you. Well, I suppose this is my cue to exit. What do you mean? Well, I'm being chucked out, aren't I? No, Oliver. It wouldn't solve anything for either of us. It would our relationship. I'm still your father and you're still my son. No. Our problem now is to find out a new basis on which to build a new kind of understanding. No, but aren't you? I'm to be given a trial, to be put on probation to see if I'm good enough to breathe the same air as you and Livia. No, thank you. I'm clearing out now and for good. You had me that worry. Anna, dear, you mustn't fret about that. I was afraid something had happened to you. Oh, it's you, Sir Oliver. Yeah. Oh, my dear, my dear. Oh, it's cold you are. Now sit right down by the fire there, and I'll make you a nice drink of hot cocoa. And you too, Mr. Oliver. Champagne to cocoa, rags to riches. Oh, no, it's the other way around, isn't it? <laughs> afraid I don't know, sir. I shan't be a minute, Miss Mabel. Oliver, hmm? I know you asked me not to talk about what happened between you and your father, but... Then why do it? Well, because... Listen to me. Haven't you heard everyone enough? Even yourself? You could patch this quarrel up so easily. Do you mind dropping it? Nice place you have here. You do yourself very well, don't you? Thanks to your father's play. Oliver, I know you're hurt and angry, but you brought it on yourself. You did behave pretty badly. 
You know, Mavis, you have the prettiest eyes in London. Why must you make everyone so miserable? That's lovely hair. It smells nice, too. Oliver, don't be so hard and cynical. Remember how happy we were when we were children? We had such dreams, such wonderful dreams. And now is our chance to make them come true. Little Mavis. Go back to him, Oliver. Don't spoil his life. Think of how much Olivia means to him. Right under my eyes all these years. I never saw you before. Please don't let your pride stand in the way. Promise you'll make it up, Oliver. Promise. If you keep looking at me like that, I'm likely to promise almost anything. Anything. One first stars to London. The world is falling to bits. It's a big thing, this war. If it's gone on for months, it can go on for years. You know, well, all my life I've been a professional Irishman, but now I say, God help England. And that's a prayer. With my own lad going, too. You've a fine son, Dermot. Your lad will straighten out, Will. Rory tells me they're making a grand soldier out of him. Oh, don't. Don't take this separation too much to heart, Will. Fathers and sons have disagreed before. Disagreement? Mm, if it were only that. You see, Dermot, I've let him know how much he means to me. That's why he can use this separation as a weapon. I don't see how he can do a thing like that. Not with the good father you've been to him. Mm, good fathers are sometimes bad fathers. Well, all I know is you've been neglecting yourself and your writing. And living a poor child is eating your heart out. Oh, you've scarcely seen her in weeks. I know, I know. Well, I've got to be getting along now. Mm, oh, don't go. I'm sorry, I must, Will. And man, do be cheering up. As my old grandfather used to say, it's a long lane that has no silver lining. <laughs> Goodbye, Will. Goodbye, Dermot. Bless you. Yes, Miss Maver, if you'd only drink a cup of tea. Well, you haven't eaten a mouthful, not from such a thing, Annie. It's Maver. I just heard from Rory. They're going to France tonight, last-minute orders. I thought you might want to see Oliver again before he left. Oh, yes, yes, Mabel, of course I would. They're leaving Victoria Station at 8 o'clock. 8 o'clock? Oh, thank you, Mabel. Yes, I'll be there. Oh, Miss Mabel. Miss Mabel. and no one allowed on the platform. My son, he's going to... Sorry, no more visitors, sir. Train's about to leave. But I got caught in the traffic. I must get... Extremely sorry, sir. Orders are orders. Now, Rory, are you sure you have everything you need? You remember what I told you about keeping your feet dry. And you'll write every day, won't you? Yes, mother. Send Oliver to me. Oliver! Did anyone ever tell you that you have the prettiest blue eyes in London? Oliver, Oliver, your father's over there. He wants to speak to you. Tell him I'm busy. Extremely busy. You know it's not fair to have girls like you down at the station. Makes a fellow want to stay at home. Oh, you are. What? Aren't you going to say goodbye to your father? Hmm? No, not goodbye, nor anything else. If I were your father, I'd... Ah, but you're not. Have you no feeling? How can you do that to your father? It's quite easy, really. Goodbye, Sheila. Goodbye. Take care of yourself. What would you like me to bring you back? You won't see me. It was like running a knife through me to have him tell me that he had nothing to say to me. 
go back to him. Say goodbye to your boy. Tell him to take care of our work for me. stand here in this wet. Miss Mabel doesn't know I've come. I wish she'd gone on a theater. Oh, sir, I'm terribly mind with worry. Worry? Yes. Worry, Annie? What's wrong? What's oh, troubling you? The way things are, sir. And Mr. Oliver going away tonight. Oh, Oliver? Oh, I never dreamt they meant anything to each other. I thought you ought to know, sir. After all, he's your son. Yes, I, I'll go to her now. Taxi! You won't say I told you. When I found it out myself, I swore I'd keep it a secret. I'm afraid this is the kind of secret that can't be kept for very long, Annie. Taxi! Come on, sir. Better drop me in the theater. His Majesty's theater. theater, isn't it? Young actress wrecks career, throws away all she's worked for, faces certain eclipse and scandal. But Oliver, how could he do this to you? How could he leave you to face this alone? Because uh, there was nothing I wanted him to do about it. He knows, doesn't he? Look, darling, don't blame Oliver. I began all this. You began it? But, but why? What's behind it all, Mabel? Well, you see, when Oliver left you, I, I thought I'd better keep an eye on him. I mean, that if he didn't lose touch with all of us, he, he might make it up with you. So I saw him often, and I'm not making much sense, am I? Well, I suppose he thought I'd been leading him on. Perhaps I had. I, I wouldn't know. I, I wasn't thinking very clearly. I was so unhappy myself. You were unhappy? Oh, I forgot. You didn't know I was in love with someone who didn't love me, did you? It's not important now. I still can't believe it. Please, darling, it, it's all so complicated. What a bad schemer I make. My part should always be written for me. How do I go on from here? You're a playwright, tell me. Yes. Yes, Mabel. I'll tell you. You must marry me. Marry you? Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, I, I know the thought of any such relation between us must be a shock to you. Nor do I offer it on any, well, romantic basis. I know how you feel towards me, just as you know how I feel towards you. Why? You're like my own dear child. And I expect I... I must seem rather a, an old gentleman to you. But I can help you through a difficult time. And no one need ever know. I'd be very honored. And very grateful. 
if you'll accept me as a, uh, as a shelter. Livia. What about Livia? Livia. You love her like that, and yet you'd marry me. Cut yourself off from all hope of happiness for me. Oh, man, you make me proud. Two minutes, Miss O'Reilly. You're a good man, William S. You must marry me, Mava. We'll close the play tomorrow. We'll give out a story that you, that you have to take a long rest. I'll get a special license, and we'll go away straight from the registry office. I must have time. I, I must think. Your whole life depends on this, Mava. And yours. Let me sleep on it. Whatever I've decided in the morning, I'll be ready. Oh, you, you can't go out and face that audience. Oh, can't I, though? Who was it said when I was only a little girl? Any actress worth her salt could go right on in a play with... with her heart broken and tears still wet on her cheeks. It is the famous William Essex. Oh, my dearest, it's wonderful to have uh, you. My please. coat's wet. Well, well, let me take it for you. No, I'm not staying long. I expect the room seems a little unfamiliar. I've been moving the furniture. Have you ever noticed how when a woman has a lot of time on her hands, she moves the furniture? <laughs> yes, I, I even had that framed. My worst sketch. You may not remember it. It's a workman I did about a year ago. Curious fellow. Impudent in a way, but I thought his face had character. Character? I don't see it. I, I'm afraid you wasted your time. I never forgot him. Better if you had. Oh, no. I've never brought you anything but unhappiness, Livia. And I never will. Is that what you came to tell me? Yes. Do you want me to release you? I don't believe you. Oh, but you must believe me. You must. Why should I? Why should you want to leave me without reason? There's only one reason why I could ever leave you. Oliver. Oh, I, I know what this break between you has meant. I, I know that it has made everything else in your life seem unimportant, even me. And I can understand that. But, oh, my dearest, don't let it separate us. No, it, it, it's nothing like that. It's something quite different. Do you remember that night when you came back and you... You told me that if ever I could look you in the eyes and, and say... Livia Baino, I don't love you. You couldn't say it then. You can say it now. That's it, isn't it? Well, that's all right. You needn't look so unhappy about it. You're free. I wonder, I wonder, would you mind going? Where shall we deliver it, sir? Oh, uh, I'll take it with me, thanks. All right, sir. 
Uh, no, uh, not the silver ribbon. The white satin, please. Oh, that's usually for a bride, sir. Yes, that's right, for a bride. Oh, very well, sir. Mr. Ethica, I've been trying to get you. I, I don't know how to tell you. Sending our line to the south and moving up tonight. And that's about all the senses will let me tell you. Still, you, you writer fellows always manage to fill your columns. If there'd been as much fighting at the front as you had in your newspapers, there wouldn't be a handful of us left by now. <laughs> well, Colonel, some of the sectors I've had to cover haven't been as quiet as this one. After all, you mustn't be too hard on us. People at home are hungry for news, you know. Hungry? Oh, ah, yes, dinner, I nearly forgot. You'll stay and have a bite with us in the mess, won't you? Oh, well... Oh, come, come now, my dear fellow. I won't take no for an answer. Well, that's very kind. I've been a new place for weeks. I say, I hope you've got some new good stories. I've completely exhausted my repertoire. As a matter of fact, I've heard rumors of mutiny. Either I jolly will get a new lot of stories, or a new lot of officers, what? <laughs> I say, by the way, didn't you say your name was Essex? Yeah, William Essex. Ah. Come in. I have a little surprise for you. <laughs> good evening, gentlemen. Good evening, good evening sir. Gentlemen, as you know, GHQ is in the habit of sending Riker chaps to visit us. Well, to let the people at home know just what we're up to. Well, to my surprise, today's visitor is not only a distinguished writer of books and plays and uh, things, but a man who has given to this regiment one of our officers. Gentlemen, I present Mr. William Essex. Good evening, sir. How are you? What you doing? Captain Essex? Yes, sir? Ah, a little surprise, what? Lucky dog. Overcome, eh? Don't blame you. Fine lad, sir. Envy you. Got six girls myself. Dinner, <coughs> sir. Dinner? I hope it's a good one. Last decent one we'd like you to get. Moving up tonight, you know. Come along. Nice of you to look me up, sir. I have gone a hundred miles to avoid seeing you. What, no big reunion scene? Father and son stuff and all that? I have no son. <laughs> Mr. Essex, you sit here on my right. Young Essex on my left. Ah. Who's missing? Who's missing? Mr. O'Reilly, sir, on leave. Expected back tonight. <coughs> no, he better be. We're short of officers, you know. Ah, well, we're very, very proud of your boy, you know, sir. He's a good soldier. Mm. Good soup. Keeps us amused. Mm. Eat salt. Tells the story better than any of us. Get that to you, I expect, eh? Like father, like son, what? <coughs> ah, that's better. Well, my boy, how does it feel sitting opposite your father again after all these months? Very nice, what? Better ask my father, sir. He's the clever chap with words. Gets paid for it. <laughs> Must have his little joke, even with you, eh? 
I see Essex. How does the boy look to you? Think he's changed much? No. No, I don't think he's changed at all. I see I'm not worth all this attention. Brings a blush to me, young cheeks. How about telling my father one of those rattling good yarns of yours, sir? Huh? Uh, what about you and the Maharaja? Oh, oh yes, that one. Yes. <laughs> well, it was like this, you know. I was only a young subaltern at the time. Never had an elephant gun in my hand before. Without an indoor, sir, as a matter of fact. Then he said to me, you must remember stopping that inn. There was a very handsome barmaid there. You must have been in the bishop's arms. Well, I said to him, perhaps if I'd been in the barmaid's arms, I might have remembered it. Well, <laughs> <laughs> You here? It's good to see you. What kind of lead is it? How's everyone at home? As well as they could be, I suppose. You're not looking very fit for a boy who's just got back from leave. Well, you're not ill, are you? Perhaps. I don't know. I saw Annie in London. Neighbours Annie. Yes. I imagine she's a bit lonely. <laughs> we all are, Rory. Not all of us. Listen to him laugh. <laughs> Look, my boy. The first time home and not finding Maver there, I can imagine what it meant to you. Why well, you two were so close to each other. I know what happened to her. Annie told me. Oh, there you are. Glad to have you back, Aradon. Good evening, sir. I see, yes, it's just to settle a bit. Wasn't it Kipling who said to be or not to be? That is the question. Kipling, yes. Uh, no, uh, Shakespeare, I believe. Here's a ride, then. Hello, old oh, man. Good oh, Did you have a good time? Isn't it a scream about the old man being here? <laughs> I want to talk to you, Oliver. All right. Upstairs. All right. Oh, no, no, no. You can't run away now. You've got to stay and help me finish the port. Uh, Jones. That's one of the real hardships of war, you know. So difficult to get good port. Mm -hmm. Well, cheerio. Yeah. Ah, by the way, is it? I've got a story you might like to hear. You might use it in some of your stuff. It's about Kitchener. Go down well at this time. You writers must run out of ideas once in a while. It's nice to get something fresh, what? Well, this happened to me in India. It was like this. And you didn't know what you did to Mabel? Of course not. That sort of thing is just sport to you. I knew nothing. It used to amuse me to watch you lie. You did it so well. It's not so amusing now. I'm not lying. Maver told me nothing. You didn't know she was dead. You didn't know she killed herself. We used to say at school, watch Oliver. Watch him get out of this scrape. He can lie his way out of anything. Look you right in the eye. Just as you're doing now, Oliver. I'll make you believe that white is wrong and black is white. But you can't do it to me, Oliver. You see, I know you too well. Rory, I, I'm sorry. You're sorry. About what happened? You couldn't be sorry about anything. All right. There's nothing to be done about it. But there is. There is something to be done. I'm going to kill you, Oliver. You're a fool if you do. You'll only be court-martialed. You think of everything, don't you, Oliver? And if you're court-martialed, they'll find out why you kill me. The whole story will come out. Maver's name dragged through the papers. That won't be so very pleasant. You swine! You'd even dig poor little dead Maver out of a grave to save yourself! All right, put that gun down. You keep out of this! Oliver's gonna pay up and you can't save no, him! No, I'm not trying to save Oliver. I'm not even sure that he's worth saving. And why don't it's you... It's true that I'm trying to save Rory. If there any question of justice being done, I'd stand aside and let you settle this your own way. But you'll be blasting you like to bits. What does that matter? Well, not a great deal to you, perhaps. But there's your father. Why, even if I've lost my son, I can't let your father lose his. You see, Rory, I can't let you do this. No matter what Oliver's done, I can't see your life ruined. It's the only way we have of 
making up to your father for Maver. He mustn't lose you, too. Let's have something decent survive this. Steady, Rory. Steady. Does the company fall in? Yes. You'll be needed below. Yes. You don't need to worry about my using it at the wrong time. I know. Goodbye, Rory. Goodbye, Uncle Will. There's nothing I can say. Look after yourself. Come back safe to your father. Ah, oh, there you are, I think. Well, we're off. We managed to finish the port, what? <laughs> Good luck. Good luck to you all. Thank you. There you are. saying goodbye to you once. I thought I wouldn't miss it this time. I suppose it's a little late to be saying things. Well, goodbye then. Goodbye. idea of yours up there. Rory is the one worth saving. I've always known it. Good that you do too. One thing though, about Maver. I simply couldn't see that far ahead. But I'm very sorry. You don't believe me, do you? time in my life, I wish that someone did. All my lies have come under roost. Oh, it's, it's not altogether your fault, Oliver. I am to blame, too. But you're not. No matter what you've done, I couldn't have turned out any better. I'd be a stroke of bad luck to any father. No, don't say that. It's the truth. I tell it so seldom, but no one believes me when I do. Oh, there's, there's so little time and so much to to say. It can all be said very quickly. You were too good. I was never any good. That's the story. No, you can't dismiss yourself like that. That's not true of anyone. You mean redeeming virtues and all that? Yes, yes, of course. Well, come to think of it, perhaps I have one. I can see how decent you are. If that's a virtue, put it on the credit side of the ledger. It won't be crowded. Oliver. Oliver. I wanted so much for you. Too much? I couldn't live up to you. I didn't know you wanted to. Neither did I till it was too late. It's not too late. You could change. It's not in me to change. But you could. You're young. Why, you have your whole life before you. Have I? When all this is over, we'll, we'll make a life together somehow. You can't pour a quart into a pint measure. One thing more. Whatever I may have done, I, I never doubted you. I've always known that you were there. Goodbye. Thanks for everything. Bye, Oliver. God bless you, my boy. 
Father. Father. directed to inform you that approval has been given for the award of the Victoria Cross to your son, Captain Oliver Essex. Oh. For conspicuous bravery in demolishing a machine gun post, single-handed at the cost of his own life. If it so pleases you, His Majesty the King desires you to appear before him to receive the decoration in person. I am, sir, your obedience. The Victoria Cross. It is a grand thing. Glory. Do you think I'll ever meant to die? I don't know. I only know when we went over that night, I never saw him look so happy. He would have done anything to make you proud. He has. He's made me very proud. Now you know what a fine lad you had. For well, Rory, we must be getting along. Your mother will be waiting for us. Goodbye, Lydia. Goodbye, Dad. Goodbye, Uncle Will. Goodbye. Goodbye, Will. And remember, onward and upward. That's the hour. Why don't you? Unless. Stay out here in the sunshine. Mm -hmm. Oh, but there isn't any this morning. There will be. It's there. Just behind those clouds. It'll break through in a little while. We'll wait for it.